Okay, next on the list is the 158.4 volt battery. Um, as far as what is serviceable on this battery, there's a battery junction board here on the end that must be removed and put on the replacement battery that you get from Honda. Uh, there are parts on this junction board that are replaceable. As a matter of fact, almost everything on that junction board is available, but nothing in the battery assembly itself is available from Honda. Uh, you have to uh, just replace the entire unit. Okay, so to replace the entire unit, we still have to take off the uh, battery junction board here. So there are eight bolts that you have to take out to get this junction board off, and two of them are concealed. So the eight bolts to remove are the four in the outside corners. Then we have two bolts that connect the positive and negative terminals of the battery to the bat some of the battery modules themselves. And then we have two more bolts that connect the battery module switch to two more battery modules inside. So there's a little cap right here on the side that you have to take off to get to one of the bolts and another cap on the other end to get to those. And so let's take out the four bolts that are electrical connections. So this one that had the cap over it was a positive uh, terminal and then there's a negative terminal right here next to it. And then for the switch, we have the positive terminal connection over here. Unscrew that one. And then the negative terminal right down here. So those four bolts disconnect the battery junction board from the battery electrically. So now um, there are three temperature sensors. There's battery temperature sensor number one right here with the yellow and the black wires. So we'll just disconnect that and rock the wires off to the side. We have battery temperature sensor number two and it has the gray and black wires. So we'll disconnect it. And then battery temperature sensor number three that has a white wire and a black electrical or white wire and a black wire. So I haven't got that gray and the black out of there. There we go. So we'll pull them off to the side. So two temperature sensors over here, one over here. This yellow one, yellow and black one is the inlet air temperature sensor and then these other ones are outlet temperature sensors. So now we can take off the four bolts that hold the battery junction board to the battery. Now when you take off this junction board there will be four little spacers that will fall out on this second generation uh, Honda Civic Hybrid bat battery. So here's one, two, three, four. So these four spacers right here are what the four bolts go through. These four with the washers on them to bolt the junction block to the battery assembly. So this entire battery assembly right here is what you would get uh, from Honda as a replacement. So let's scoot it off to the side for a moment and let's take a look at 
the battery junction board itself and what we can do with it. Okay, looking at the junction board, there are several things we want to pay attention to. First, we have a negative contactor. Uh, in the previous video on uh, high voltage batteries, we talked about contactors and what they do. But just as a review, a contactor is what connects the high voltage battery positive terminal or negative terminal to one of the two wires, those orange wires that we took off of the uh, inverter uh, and converter assembly. So the negative connect contactor connects the negative terminal of the high voltage battery to the negative cable coming off the battery. If this had a positive contactor, then that would connect the positive uh, terminal of the battery to the positive cable. But this model does not have a positive contactor. This just has a negative contactor. It has a negative what Honda calls a bypass contactor with a bypass resistor. Um, but that in other automobile, other hybrids is called a pre-charge contactor and a pre-charge resistor. And the purpose of that pre-charge contactor is to put the same voltage on each side of the negative contactor before its contacts close so that there is no arcing that takes place that would damage the, the contactor itself. So we put the voltage on it. We use the resistor to limit the current uh, down to where it's just a tiny, tiny bit. So both the negative contactor, the pre-charge contactor, or bypass contactor, as Honda calls it, and the bypass resistor are serviceable. There's a battery current sensor right here that will measure the amount of current in the negative circuit, uh, which would be the same as the positive. It's, a, it's just a big series uh, circuit. So that current sensor is serviceable also. And then on the back here, we have the battery module switch, the one that uh, I, we've broken off the, the top part of the switch. But that switch, I have a new switch ordered. Hopefully it'll be here uh, before we put this back together. But it also has a 100 amp fuse uh, that goes with it that's rated at 450 volts. And the switch, when it opens and closes, makes a contact between these two terminals here. And that's where these spacers go and the longer bolts go. The positive terminal of the battery connects right here and the negative terminal of the battery connects down here. So every one of these pieces on here can be removed and put back on. Uh, and you can buy each one of them. This switch is $106 uh, from our local uh, Honda dealer. And it's, it's on its way. Okay, so that is our battery junction board. You do not have to replace the entire thing. You can replace individual components if you determine that one of those is bad. And typically you would get some sort of a diagnostic trouble code that would tell you uh, if one of, one of these is having a, a problem. All right, now let's set the battery junction board off to the side and let's look at the battery itself. Uh, as I mentioned before, none of this is serviceable uh, through Honda. You just replace the entire thing. Uh, and it's my understanding that Honda doesn't make new batteries for their vehicles anymore. They're all reconditioned batteries, whatever that means. Um, but I want to disassemble this anyway, and uh, at least partially, to show you what's uh, inside of here. So on the end of the battery here, we actually have a bunch of bus bars. So when in the video series on the high voltage battery or the video episode I did a few few weeks ago on the high voltage battery, I showed you the little copper bus bars that would uh, corrode and cause voltage drop problems on uh, Toyota, uh, some Toyota batteries. Well, these are the bus bars that uh, Honda uses to connect each uh, set of battery modules together. Now, the Honda batteries use D-cell nickel metal hydride 
batteries rather than the flat batteries uh, that are made by Panasonic uh, that Toyota uses. And so each one of these bolts here is like, that I'm taking out, is like disconnecting the end of each of those little battery modules that we looked at in the, in the high voltage battery video. And because we are, there are 13 battery modules in here. Each module should be approximately 13 point, or I'm sorry, 14.4 volts. Okay, so there are 13 modules with two bolts apiece. That's 26 bolts, except four of those we've already taken out with the little spacers. So 22 bolts that have to come out to undo all of those bus bars. And then this end piece of the battery can come off. Now on this end piece, we've got this orange colored high voltage warning uh, cable and it has all these little tiny wires that connect with it. And those are the voltage sensing wires that the battery condition monitor module looks at for each set of battery modules here. So we've got, uh, if, if you can see the colors here, we've got orange and we've got green. And they're in pairs or modules as, um, as this is disassembled. Uh, if we look at the other side of the battery, it has warning labels uh, telling you what type of uh, electrolyte this has and that you need to be careful uh, working on and around this battery. Not to be or not to have a live flame anywhere near it, and so on. And there are explosive gases that could come out of here. But what I'd like you to see here on this end is I've gone through and, and labeled each battery module and the direction of current through each one and where the battery positive post and battery negative post connect these two, and then the battery switch, here's the battery switch negative, and the battery switch positive are over here. So it open circuits the entire uh, battery. So battery module number one, which is the positive post of the DC battery, starts right here, and then if we work backwards, it comes over, down, up, goes to the switch, we connected the switch right here, go over, up, down, and around, and back to the battery negative post. Okay, so now let's take a look at a couple of these batteries, battery modules. If I carefully tip this over, There are some plastic clips that hold the styrofoam in place here. I'm just using a door panel trim tool to remove those. Now we can lift off the upper cover and then we have three additional styrofoam pieces. These pieces of styrofoam are to uh, are not only heat insulation but they keep air routed through the battery. It comes in on this side, comes out on this side. We don't want it coming out the, the sides. There's a left, a center, and a right side styrofoam piece. And now we can see the orange and the green D-cell batteries, battery modules uh, that are in here. 
Now, none of this, once again, is serviceable or recommended by Honda for disassembling. But if you were sure that you had just one or two bad modules, there are people on eBay and the internet sites that s will sell you modules. Maybe they've taken apart a battery like this and, and re reconditioned a battery module or found the ones that are still good versus the ones that are bad. And there are several ways to do that. Uh, voltage is one. Um, load testing is another one. So if we lift off this upper cage, which has some little springs underneath it to keep tension down on the batteries themselves, then we have four little plastic pieces. Each one has to go in a specific location. And then we can actually lift out individual battery modules. So there are 13 of these. There are six D-cell batteries under the green and six more under the orange. These are nickel metal hydride batteries, so they're 1.2 volts each. So that means we have 12 1.2 volt batteries in series with each other. They, they're welded together, connected here, positive to negative uh, on the ends over here, which give us 14.4 volts when it's at its optimum voltage. There's a screw on tip over here. You'll notice that one of these uh, tips is more oriented up and down while the other one is is vertical now uh, you want to pay close attention if you ever disassemble one of these to how it came apart because when you get all these laid out on a bench and try to put them back together you'll find that it can be quite a puzzle to put back together and one clue as to how they're supposed to go back together is the back side of this battery voltage monitoring uh, plate. It will, you've got the, the squared and rounded edges of each battery uh, to where you'll line it up and it will only fit in one direction. But even that, if you, if you didn't take pictures, take photographs as you disassemble, uh, you could be in <laughs> a world of hurt trying to put it back together uh, because it's a it it's quite a challenge. Okay, so we have 13 14.4 volt battery modules. If you take 14.4 times it by 13, you get 158.4 volts. That is the battery voltage for the second generation. Honda Civic Hybrid. The first generation just had one module less, which gave us 144 volts. Um, exactly. If you take 14.4 volts off of 158.4, you get 144. So it has a, a case similar to this, except all of the battery modules are orange and they're not connected together on the ends like this on the first generation. The third generation battery is, is a lithium ion uh, chemistry type battery and uh, it, I have not seen one of those. I don't know how much of it is serviceable. I suspect none of it, just like this, and that there might be a, a battery module uh, junction board that, that's replaceable on the end there. Uh, some of these batteries have a temperature sensor that's clipped into them and so the routing of the temperature sensor wiring is important so that when you put this back together you're not pinching wires and creating short circuits that should not uh, be there so you got to make sure those are all up in their clips where they are supposed to be and not get smashed uh, in place as you reassemble it so that is the Honda IMA system battery. The, the Accord was a, a higher voltage, I believe. The, um, all the other IMA 
batteries were very similar to this, maybe just a different voltage level or maybe the same voltage level. It really doesn't matter. It's just that the, the batteries are in series with each other and can have poor connections. Although I, I've never seen a poor connection on a Honda battery like I have on the Toyota batteries. But the Honda batteries have had lots of trouble as we've talked about with self-discharge and a, and a short life. Okay, well, the next thing to look at then is going to be the the IMA motor assembly itself, the bolts to the back of the engine and the crankshaft. And so let's go look at how that works and how to remove and install it.